I love grayish and I don't care who knows it. I don't care. I don't. Well, maybe a tiny bit, but I guess that's the Canadian in me. So polite. <laughs> you know what though? I think it's important in life to stand for something. Whether you love me or yes, strongly dislike me. I don't think anyone hates me, right? Do you? Why do you hate me? This is a video that I could not possibly do by myself. So big thanks to Mighty Boards for helping us out with this video. More on them later on. Grayish is the paint color category that combines gray and beige. Funny enough. And what was once a mighty color choice that made its way into many color palettes the last decade has recently seen a bunch of people starting to turn their backs on the Revere Pewters of the world. Some people think it's become such a boring choice that automatically dollifies any space that you use it in. Well, I'm here to tell you that those people are wrong and should be ashamed of themselves. You're also kind of right in a certain way, which I'll get to later on in the video. At the end of the day, right or wrong is really subjective when it comes to paint color, but there is your opinion and mine. So let's talk about mine. This is my love letter to grayish and why I'm still remaining faithful to the edgecomb and agreeable grays out there. The first complaint I hear about grayish is, it's too dull. So boring, man. My interpretation of that is, it's not really dull, it's just neutral, that's all. Now technically, in color theory, the neutral color is the color that takes up the most space in a palette, acting as kind of a baseline for the whole color scheme, but most people know neutral colors as being fairly safe and flexible. They're the exact opposite of polarizing, because neutrals tend to have a balanced approach in their composition. And I'm a Libra, so I'm all about the balance. Look at my scales go. I can't really understand why you would hate a specific category of colors, because they're good at fitting in. You know, a lot of neutral colors that I talk about on this channel are great because they strike a balance between cool and warm. It might be gray at its core, but it also happens to have some beige or some cream or maybe a bit of tan or taupe. And that allows it to coincide with any of those colors that are happening throughout your color scheme. And that's awesome. On the other hand, if you all of a sudden decided to paint all your walls red, that kind of limits you design-wise, especially when you're picking up fixtures and furniture. But by going with something neutral like classic gray, you reduce the risk that your walls are going to clash with anything else in the room. And this makes the color selection process easier for a lot of people. Why are you making it so hard on yourself? Make it easy. The second complaint I hear about grays is, it's just a fad. Oh, I see. So we're upset because a lot of people are using it. But I think the main reason people are using it a lot is it ends up working in a lot of situations, especially for those more transitional decors that have some traditional warmer elements and then other more contemporary cooler elements all mixed into one. I've always held the notion that you can observe trends and fads just out of curiosity, but ultimately you just need to do what works in your space. Think about how you want your color palette to come together based on your preferences and keep it about that rather than external opinions. Even with grayish being pretty fatty, fatty, not fatty, it's certainly a trend that isn't really as restrictive as the, you know, terracotta reds that were popular 20 years ago. I mean, I really liked them for about five years, but not so much anymore. This is a trend that keeps your walls as neutral canvases, where you can get wild and crazy with what you put on your walls. You know, imagine if artists, like, you know, fine artist painters started painting on purple canvases all of a sudden because they just got bored with starting with an off-white canvas. Be kind of weird, right? Bit of a stretch analogy-wise, but you know, take it or leave it. Finally, the third complaint is a lot of you feel that the highly recommended neutral grayish colors aren't as versatile as people say they are. And this is where I can start to agree a little bit. There is no magic color out there that works in every single situation, especially if you're a little more sensitive to perceived undertones, and if you have a beef with too much green coming through or a bit too much purple happening, then you might be in a position where these types of colors will be a struggle. Sometimes being too neutral and safe and right down the middle can be a hindrance because they're right on that cusp of cool or warm and can really teeter-totter one way or another with something as simple as a subtle lighting shift. So when I commend a color for its versatility, that is not me signing off on it being an awesome choice 100% of the time, but it's definitely going to be a better choice for more people than 
maple leaf blue over here. Any hockey fans watching? Too soon. Yeah. So for the people that are concerned about how versatile grayish is in general, the best way to figure out if it works in your space is to test it out. Get a paintable board like Muddy Boards, get a few of them, and just put them around your room that you're painting so you can see how the color will look like in your space. Just because it's an amazing versatile color doesn't mean it's gonna work every single time. And what's great about Mighty Boards is it's a giant paintable board. So you're not just using a small color chip or even a printed sheet. This is something that you're taking the actual paint from a tester pot or even an old gallon of paint and just putting it on the surface, moving it around and seeing the color for what it is. It's our testing board of choice and you can check out their link down below for more information on them. Where my grayish haters and I can find some level of solidarity is in the fact that I do think it can be overused at times. The big trap of grayish is it can sometimes be the lazy way out of design. Its gift of versatility becomes its curse because people will just start throwing all kinds of different gray beige colors all over the place thinking it'll just look great. What ends up happening is you either end up with something that's very monochromatic and kind of lacks depth a bit or on the other hand, you could have neutrals of varying undertones that sort of look like a mishmash and can end up clashing, believe it or not. And this is why my current implementation of grayish colors in my palettes act as more of a filler color that helps connect things together. In fact, it's still a big part of my personal taste, but I end up splitting grayish into grays and beiges, which not only adds a little more specificity to my designs, but also gives the space that I'm working in more of a complementary flow rather than having everything just crammed together. Now I'm a bit of a foodie, so one more analogy here. Instead of a sushi burrito, I think I'd rather have some sashimi, and a quesadilla. You know what I mean? Fusion is overrated.